thanks for joining in today. I see a lot of familiar names there. We've got some folks from out west and some folks from up north, and glad you were all able to join us today. This is one of a, a series of trainings that we're putting on for folks that we're calling brush ups. They're 10 or 15, 20 minutes long. Basically, an opportunity to just stop and say, you know, this is a pretty big project we're working on with Medicaid here, and um, we need to make sure that we're maximizing our membership in the Greenbush Consortium. So thanks for joining us today. We'll be on for about 15 minutes. If at the end of the time you have, or any time during the presentation, if you have any questions, just type them in the question box and I will get to those. So we've been visiting with you a lot over the summer. Um, we've had quite a few changes um, in our Medicaid billing program, all in the effort to improve um, our services to you. Um, at the same time, building on Terry Pence's strengths of uh, compliance, and she's been working on that project. So um, all of us over here on the right-hand side of the list, have um, been working on um, shoring up our systems for you. I wanted to show you our new website. I think it'll be something that you want to bookmark. Um, and as you train new providers at your site, you might want to bookmark also. I'm going to show you real quickly how I got here. Greenbush has quite a large website. And so I want to show you how to get started. Uh, it's a greenbush.org website. You do have to type in the whole website or you're going to get some funny different stuff and you don't want that. There's our beautiful Camp and Retreat Center located right out our side of our windows, but we never get to see that. We never get to go outside. If you go under Administration, we'll drop down to Special Education and then Medicaid Billing. So I'm going to hold that there for you for just a minute. and then you get to this site. The reason I'd like for you to bookmark this site and use it as one of your favorites is we've added a lot of things on here over the summer that we think may be useful to you. So just as a little quickie, all of our contact information is here. As a reminder, I'm doing the day-to-day -day operations, Terry's doing compliance, and then you all recognize the name of your contact here. We've added this click on button to CompuClaim. If you'd like to train your new providers to click on to CompuClaim straight from there, that would be just fine. Or they can continue doing things that, the way that they have been. On the left hand side here, we've added a bunch of resources um, for you. And I think most of you have seen these, but um, I'm trying to think if how many of you I've actually visited with. But I want to just put a quick look on these. If you're not sure what you're getting from us, Here's a nice little handout. If there's anything um, on there that uh, that you would like to have, just, just give us a holler. There is one thing here that I think has been very, very helpful to most of our local education agencies. We finally, after taking some time and stopping and thinking about what we do, have made the system of fee-for-service into a flowchart. Sometimes this is helpful for providers that you are working with in your district or superintendents who ask you questions and you say, I don't know, I just do what Greenbush tells me to do, or <laughs> I'm, I'm just one cog in this whole big machine. So this is a nice picture to show how the whole thing works. So anything that is white and is a rectangle is the um, local education agency, that's you, or the ECI network. And so you know, you know all of these things, but it's just in one place. First you have to have a student identified as special needs, then you have to have it written in the IEP. Two important pieces of paper have to happen, and those are your responsibility to gather. So you have the um, consent to share information, and you have a physician's prescription. Following that, the, or while that is happening, the students um, are receiving the services. That's what we're here for. That's what we're all about. Providers are documenting, and then they're putting it into CompuClaim. Most providers do still use that as two steps, but some are getting pretty savvy and are carrying their iPads around their laptops with them and they're using CompuClaim for all of their documentation. It's really working out nicely for a lot of districts. So once the provider puts that information in there, then we have the green circles which is Greenbush. So that's when we are looking at the information at a different level. It can go one of two ways. The documentation is complete, that's a good day. And then the claims are submitted. An important note for all of you for this coming school year, effective, uh, we actually started doing this in July. We are billing for you on a weekly basis. Every Thursday, we are hitting submit to Kansas Medicaid. That is a change for you. 
Um, and that is probably a good thing for you because cash will flow quicker and you'll have responses quicker. What it means for your providers, big star on this one, is that they will only be able to edit a log up until Thursday morning. Thursday morning first thing, that's when we're going to start hitting submit. So they'll panic on you, I bet, and they'll say, oh my gosh, I saw a kid on Wednesday, it's Friday, I remembered I used the wrong code, I can't find it, it's not there. It's not where they can see it, but it is still fixable. That's when you as the contact simply need to email your contact at Greenbush and say, we've got a mistake, could you please fix it? Here's the date of service, student's name, date of birth, and this is the fix that needs to happen. So please let your providers know when you see them that that is totally okay. We have just limited their time because we're really focusing on getting cash to you. After the claim is submitted, as you can know, it can be approved or it can be denied. If it's approved, then Greenbush receives the payment for the services in about 10 days from Kansas Medicaid. So the time frame here is when it is submitted on Thursday, over the weekend, it goes into one of these two categories, approved or denied. And so what's important about that is if it's approved, then in about 10 days, we get a check at Greenbush. There are a few of you out there that have direct deposit. This does not impact you, okay? These are for the folks that Greenbush receives the check. We take our 6% and then we turn around and pay you. If a claim is denied, it's coming back to us and we're trying to figure out what's going on with it. As you all know, the main reason claims are denied is because of the status of the child. If the child is eligible or not eligible for straight Medicaid as we call it. If they're HealthWave 21, it's not going to pay. So that is why it denies. We go ahead and send it just in case the child's status has changed from HealthWave 21 to Title 19, which is straight Medicaid, which is for people having a lower income. So let's go over here, what happens if it's incomplete? This, I know last year in April, we rolled out the health service report and it was new. I hope, I really hope that you'll take the opportunity this fall to start using that report because it is so much easier than what we used to do with you and it gives you total control of how you determine what your unbillables was what we used to call them, but it gives you total control in seeing what is being held up in the service. We'll talk more about that in a minute. That's where you're taking corrective action. You're doing things like getting supervision checked off. You are um, finding prescriptions, those kind of things. And then the process starts all over again. So this is available on our website if you'd like to share it with anybody and when people say, well, what are we supposed to be doing and what is Greenbush supposed to be doing? Another thing that we have here is the user guide for the health service report. If you would like to print that off and know what to do on the health service report, little cheat sheet there for you. It's really handy. This is a nice um, sheet. You may or may not have received this from your superintendent. They got this in the, um, in the mail when they got their new memorandum of agreement. But here's, um, for some reason, we haven't shared with you in the past when you're going to get a check, so we've tried to do that this year. This is when you can expect to check around this period of time. This is when Greenbush does our regular payables. And so um, there's checks that are going out tonight uh, on August the 15th and we will send checks out twice a month. Here's a new important thing for you to know. If you are the person receiving the checks, in addition to knowing when the checks are coming, we have started using a check summary form. In that check summary form, there's a lot of valuable information for you as the contact. If you are not the person who receives the checks, please get with that person in your district and ask them to pass that on to you. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the information that is on that form that will help you do your job 
and to help you um, make sure that you understand what's coming in and going out. Again, it's a check summary form. You can look for it in your mail probably Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. It will be the third one that has arrived, hopefully, at your district. If for some reason you don't see that next week, please let me know. You will receive that summary form even if your district has generated no money for that period of time. You will receive the check summary form even if your district has generated no money for that period of time. The reason for that is that way you'll know if nothing's going through. Instead of just wondering why you didn't get a check, you will see what is happening on the back end of your billing. So we hope you find that information useful. I've added um, this. Many of you were trained, all of you were trained this summer on how to use the new Google Drive. We know that's a bit of an extra step for you, but I'm sure you'll appreciate the extra protections for HIPAA and FERPA compliance that you have with that. On our website, here's the little cheat sheet. If you forget how to do it, the nice gal that talked to you on the phone this summer by the name of Don Miles has typed everything out that you talked about. So if you'd like to print out that cheat sheet, it's available on our website. The other things that you might want to look at are the Medicaid manuals. We will keep the updated Kansas Medicaid manuals for LEAs on our website. If you ever want to download the whole document, it's not that long, and you can have the big picture of what's allowable and not allowable in Kansas Medicaid. And finally, we've added our um, sample forms up here, the sample parent consent, the sample doctor's prescription. As a reminder to those of you who work in school districts, an ECI is an early childhood network. Those are the folks that we sometimes call tiny K or infant toddler. They're responsible for providing special education for children ages zero to three. And we also bill for them. So anything that is for them will have ECI in front of it. Over here on the right, I'd like to show you, if you this is how you booked your webinar today. In about another six weeks, we'll have some more webinars and we'll talk on a specific topic. And here is something you're going to want to know. The provider tutorials. These are here all the time. As you have a provider asking questions or you have a new provider, these YouTube videos are handy. This is a session on managing so this nice man named Fred so will, um, through a YouTube video, train any of your providers that you would like um, right here under these four categories. They're each about four minutes long. So we hope the information on this website is helpful, and please watch it because we're going to continue to add new things. Two other important things that happened overnight. The CompuClaim system was upgraded. There were many things done on the back side that you won't see, but there were a couple of things that were added for the providers. Good news for the SLPs in the world who do groups. They are now able to bill for the entire or log for the entire group at one time with the exception that they simply need to add a comment for each an individual student. SLPs across Kansas right now are yipping with joy. That went out effective this morning and we are sending out um, over the weekend, we will send you an email with a user's guide. If you could please help us by sharing that with all of your providers, we would certainly appreciate it. We think they're going to like the change. Now I want to just quickly, this is the part where the brush up comes in. I'm going on to the demo site, Ooh, maybe. which has made up school districts in it. If at any point in time you would like to just visit with me on a GoToMeeting, just the two of us, um, and we can look through your individual district's information, I would be happy to do that. Please just email me. So is this looks like what you normally see. So when you get into CompuClaim, if you're having any trouble at all logging on, please just let us know you see these four categories. Again, manage users is where you will see everyone who works in your district. It's really important right now at the beginning of the year 
to go on and make sure you have all of your providers in there and you've deleted the ones that are no longer working with you. And just as a reminder, how do you do that? Through the Google Drive. No longer do you need to send us an email. You log into your greenbushhealth.org email address and you add and subtract providers. That's where you can do that. Again, it will keep it all in one place. We won't have a million emails everywhere. You won't have to worry if we forgot it or not or lost it or not. It's all now in the drive, as we say. So please take a minute and review the folks that are there. We're going to go back to administration, top right, review logs. As a reminder, everything is about that service log, isn't it? So I'm going to click service log. When a provider is doing their thing, they're clicking service log. Service log equals claim. Any of these boxes can be used to filter your information that you are interested in. If you wanted to look at the service logs for just one provider, you would put it there. Just one student, put it there. A period of time, right here. If you work for a co-op and you want to sort by districts, right there. What I'm going to do right now is just hit search and I'm going to get everything we have. These service logs are interesting to look at, one, but I find that many superintendents, directors, administrators, those who are in charge of actual instruction, if they would look at these, they would just be amazed. One, it would show the level or amount of work that's going into this, but more importantly, they could see and say, is this the right procedure or information for this particular kid? Should we really be really doing therapeutic activities? As a quick um, example, I recently had an administrator look at this for the first time and when she looked at it she saw that a student was receiving nursing services which was fine but she remembered at that point in time that that hadn't been added to the IEP. A quick fix, no problem at all, but what a great way to make sure that your quality of uh, documentation is there and that everybody's using this really valuable tool for, uh, the, for good. Also, this is where we can see things like, oh, this kid is continuing not to progress. This is, um, we probably need to stop and see what we're doing. You can see all that information here. So again, sort as you want, play with it. You cannot hurt anything. Back to administration, that's kind of our little place to always go. If you've got five minutes this week to work on Medicaid, and I understand that some of you only have five minutes a week to work on Medicaid, this performance report is what I like to call the at a glance. Please, since it's the beginning of the year, make sure you go back and look at last year because you're not going to see much if you're in this year. Sort as you wish or just run the report. I like this report because it truly is at a glance. You can see all the providers, students in caseload, the students who are eligible, how many students of those students were logged on, the monthly log count, and the total log count. And this will slowly fill up as the year goes on. Here's an example. Under this speech pass, she's got 40 kids in her caseload, 29 of them are eligible, but she only logged on three. Hmm, something's not right. Why didn't she log on the rest of them? She had three total logs, and it had none this month. Why? Because she probably entered them over here in the next month. So it looks to me like this provider needs to get busy. I say in a nice way. I'm sure they have other things to do, but that's a great way to stop and look. Anything that is underlined, you can click on and get to the actual log. So everything is there and easy for you. Again, on the performance report, sort how you want, run report, make sure you choose your year. Okay. If your users are up to date, these numbers should be right, right in here. Don't you hate that when I'm flicking around like that? I apologize. Okay, back to administration. And then finally, if you've got a little more time, 
and it's time to shake some money out of the tree here, then this is the held service report. Some of you have already listened in on this, but I'm going to show you real quickly a couple other things. On the held service report, we're finding districts are using it very well. They're doing things to make the most of the money they have, as we say, left on the table. Because this is money on the table being held in the system until the time that you could say um, everything is there. Consent, script, supervision, it's all there. So I've run the report for the year. As a reminder, these numbers are important. This means what is held in the system. What have your um, providers logged on, but it has not been submitted to Kansas Medicaid? This number is the one you want to focus on the held services. Those are trouble. 129 claims. This number 27 means it's still in the system, but it's ready to go. It's just not Thursday yet. So this is the number you're going to focus on. So let's be smart about focusing and not panic and not look at this spreadsheet and say, oh my word, it's seven pages. How am I ever going to get through this? This report is super handy. The first thing you have to always do is sort by yes or no on Medicaid. As a reminder, some kids are in there that are not Medicaid eligible. You can't do a darn thing about that other than check to see if they are on Kansas Medicaid or to ask us to check. This Medicaid eligible yes will sort out the no's and then let's go down to the bottom. You will see that the number has now lowered to 121 from 129. That's a good thing. We got rid of eight of them. Now let's find out why they're held. As you can go, always click to the right of the word. There's a drop down box there. It will populate with your information if you do it right. These are all the reasons that Kansas Medicaid will not pay. Some of them. Well, uh, they're showing up now, but they typically won't on yours, these medical IDs. But let's choose this one, this consent thing. We all know that consents are one of the deals that always hold us up. So I chose it. I clicked OK. And then look what happened. I won't go down to the bottom left. There's only 26 items that are held up because of a consent. What do we know about consents? They're all attached to a kid. So let's find out how many kids are involved in those 26 claims. I go to student last name, I filter, and there we go. Those six kids, if we had consents on them, then it could go out. Those claims could go out. And when I work with contacts on this and I start showing lists like this, I immediately see light bulbs go on. And clerks say things like, oh, this kid moved two years ago. We're never going to get that one. Okay, then. Let's not worry about it. So let's click all the others but that kid. And we go down the list. They say, oh, this Bailey kid, his mom said no. Okay, then let's not click him. Let's go down to this. Now how many are we talking about? Now we're getting even lower. We're getting so low there isn't even a total here because we can just count them. So you can see how you can keep going and keep going. When you're ready to take the filters off, do you see the clear right here, bottom right hand corner? That takes all the filters off, we start over again. So we're going to do one more exercise here. Yes, let's choose prescriptions and supervision. Supervision's easy. You can just go get the person who actually oversees them to go. Again, pretty short list. There's not even a number down here. But the nice thing is that we can now go back to students and see how many we're talking about. So with supervision not complete, I'm going to stop for one moment. Supervision not complete. What's an easy fix to that? It's the CODA. So what do you need to do? You need to notify the OT. Please go in and approve those supervision logs and those three would go out the door. On these prescription problems, we can go in and see, looky there, they all belong to one person. If we got that one script, then we could get rid of all of those. One other thing that I know sometimes your soups and di directors say, 
hey, how much money do we have hanging out with Medicaid? It's the question of the day, isn't it? And you say, well, let me just tell you. We have no filters on right now. I'm going to take that filter off. I just did something wrong. One moment, please. Thanks for holding on with me for that. We'll just say I'm showing you the second time so you get it. Yes. Thank you. We'll filter those. Now. We've gone down and we're at 121 claims that are being held because they're missing something. Your director says to you, how much money is that? Well, you could go over here to the right and you could add up these estimates. These are estimates. They're estimates because sometimes there's two units, sometimes there's three. But it's a, it's a fair number. You could add all those up by hand. Or you could go up here, export to Excel. Do this, this. You could manipulate this list any way you want it to, any way that you want to, any way that you want to um, take out columns, whatever it is. It's now on just a straight Excel. What I'm doing is I'm going to go to the list of unit costs, and just like with any other spreadsheet, I am going to sum it at the bottom and you'll know what you're dealing with. So you can see, you can get people's attention pretty quickly when you say, well, if the OT would just click supervision, we could have $5,000. So in this particular district, they have uh, $3,667. So those would probably be worth working. So that's a quick example of how to use the health service report and uh, to determine how much money is on the table. Going back to administration, maybe, and there we are again. So again, if you have five minutes, performance report. If you really want to shake some money out, health service report. If you want to dig deep and to see what your providers are doing, review logs. And this one, it'd be your homework for the next week or so to make sure you have all of your providers in and ready to go. So with that, I've talked 27 minutes, which is longer than I promised you. I don't see any questions in the question box, but I'm going to take about 30 seconds to see if anybody has any questions on anything I've talked about today. Not seeing any. If you have anything later, please call me anytime, 620 249 7149, that's my cell phone. You can always call the Spectra office anytime. And email works great too. So thank you for taking the time on this gorgeous Friday afternoon to sit in with us. Have a great school year. We'll be in touch soon. Thanks so much and bye.